relatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very understandable. Um, I started the recording on the uh, rhombus food, but let's. Maybe let's... we should restart. This is vital. No, no, it's staying. No, this is vital to the campaign. Actually. This is this is unabridged. All like, right. If you don't have the rhombus chocolate, then you will not understand the com the, the campaign. Yeah, sure. It's integral to the plot. <laughs> Um, I believe we are all here, so we can get started. Um, Do you guys know how Gideon is on, on the server? Uh, yeah, no, he's on the server, but he uh, he's not going to be able to join in the sessions. Yeah. And I just, I'm going to let him I'm leave if he wants to leave. Right now, we, like, right as we were about to start, Gideon is now texting me on Discord. <laughs> John, <laughs> John. John, now is not the time for memes. We must start. Okay. Let's please start. Before I get even more into character. So. We start this campaign underground. Slowly. One by one. Each of you come to consciousness. With little to no memory of where you are, and only the faintest recollection of who you once were. Your body is sore, as if you've just gone through a long, painful exercise and are now just waking up again, and your mind is filled with a very uncertain fog as you start to take in your surroundings. You find yourself in a stone cavern, hexagonal in shape almost a temple. As you look around, you see that there are six others in here with you, each laying on what looks to be a stone platform, equidistantly placed around uh, the center, so some sort of altar-like structure with some dark stains on it. Behind each of you stands a statue, mostly featureless, but there are identifying features, and each statue is somewhat unique. And at the foot of each statue lies a chest. Now, we're going to go around, starting with um, Lace. Can you introduce oh. what your character looks like? What their first actions are. Um, this is my character. Um, in art. Um, I am going to get as far away from everybody else as I can. You, as soon as you take in your surrounding where you are, the dimly lit cavern, you instantly jump back and have your back pressed against the statue that was behind your pedestal. Do I have any weapons on my person? On your person, no. And it appears each of you are, are wearing rather simple clothes at the moment. Dang it. At the moment. Do you think we're that simple? The heck. Max. <laughs> Jokes on you, maybe I Introduce your character and what they are doing oh, in this instant. Is this what I get for talking? Um, no, we're going around. Everyone, everyone will, everyone okay. will get hit with this. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. <coughs> um, so I already have an image of. Andromeda in the art panel. But uh, you can repost it or you can just refer back to it. Um, I'm just gonna refer back to it. Um, I'm really bad at explaining, but you, everyone else, would see a rather tall. Uh, what do you say? Pale. What did you say? Andromeda's pale. Yeah. <laughs> kind of pale woman with almost, uh, I want to say. She kind of looks, I'd say she looks kind of more on the dead looking side. 
with anything. She's like a goth kid who finally got their dreams of being undead. <laughs> yeah, basically. She's hot though, okay. Just... Oh yeah, no, uh I have I have her pulled up right now. At the very <laughs> first art post. Oh yeah. Very hot. I can take things seriously, I swear. What do you do? What's your uh, first thing you do taking in this this room? There's like statues and stuff, right? Yeah, behind each of you there is a statue and a chest. I want to look through the chest. Behind me. As you look through the chests, uh, it opens easily unlocked. And in it you do find all of the items uh, that your character has on their sheet. Uh, your outfit folded very carefully and 50 gold in a bag containing 50 gold pieces. Ooh. Quinn. Cool. Introduce your Hi. character and their first actions upon being introduced to this situation. Hello. Let me post post him on art. I have a few things of him. Excitement. This is going to be fun. I'm currently drawing my guy's face finally, so yeah. it's doing well. So just just a little elf guy, just a little elf, just a little guy. Um, <laughs> you see long uh, uh, red tattoos wrap around his arms, uh, and they look vaguely insectoid. Uh, vaguely insectoid tattoos. Um, uh, and first thing. Uh, he does is uh, begin searching for his stuff. All right. Uh, where, where do you where do you look first? If I may ask. Um. Well, usually the most important thing uh, is right next to me, but. I'm assuming the doll's not there. The doll isn't. Mm -hmm. and you're, there's, a, there's a small sense of panic rising in your chest. You're not entirely certain why, or even what you're looking for. You just know that something important to you is missing. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Uh, and there were statues? Statues behind you, yes. Mm -hmm. What are the statues of? They look to be of various figures, different uh, people. Each statue is different. It seems unique to whoever might have been in front of it. Uh, for instance, oh. your statue appears to be some sort of humanoid uh, figure wearing a long robe and some sort of scarf with a book in one hand and his other outstretched with some carved semblance of magical energy held. It is all simple stone, but you you can get the impressions that whoever made this was trying to give off. Um. And there is the chest at the statue's feet. A chest usually contains things. Open the chest. You open the chest and you find uh, something which immediately you grab. There's a small plush uh, stuffed animal bear. As well as the rest of your clothes, your spell book, and all bunch of items that you immediately recognize as these are yours. You just don't remember Audible getting them. Audible sense of relief. Uh, Brady. Um, My turn. Yeah, if you can introduce your character and what they're going to do as soon as they're introduced to this situation. 
So I have a visual reference as long as a description I wrote. So I will read that off once I send. There we go. Uh, so I am a purple skinned tiefling man with purple and black tipped ho curved horns. Uh, my, my eyes are faintly glowing red and have no iris or pupils on them. Uh, I have very long, ashy black uh, uh, braided hair. Uh, I look very, my my face is very like young young looking, and skinny, but it looks stricken with exhaustion. Uh, and after I see both the elf with the doll and the incredibly tall undead woman grabs items from their chest, I turn around and uh, loot my chest as well. Yeah, in it you find items that you inexplicably attach as your own, although you, at the moment, can't recall receiving any of them. And you do something, something about this entire situation, nagging at the back of your mind, you cannot place this, but there's something conflicted, just a small moat. Of that in the back of your mind you can't seem to shake at the moment hmm. john hmm. Right. Uh, i will post once again my visual art but right. my character is a human he is very very thin he's got a almost like a small brown haired mohawk and over his face, he has several different piercings. But, yeah. Um, and then, I'm going to look at the statue behind me. The statue behind you stands a tall figure with their arms crossed over their chest and a curved dagger in each one. They look to be wearing uh a heavy cloak with what looks to be leaves or feathers on it. They almost look elven with at least how their ears are pointed, but only one of them as the face, the head of this statue seems to have been broken off almost entirely. Scratch and marred the uh, statue otherwise standing there, seemingly untouched. Roll an investigation check. Ooh, investigation. That's a that's a nap one. <laughs> you first that one. First, first that one. You great for everybody. <laughs> it's it's just too dark in this cavern. This cavern is only lit by some sort of ambient magical energy. You you haven't placed the source yet, and it's just too dark to make out if there is writing or not. Within your chest is, as the others have found, uh, all the items that you inexplicably recognize as yours. And I forgot to mention this, everyone else also gets a pouch of 50 gold. Wicked. That's in everyone's nice. chest, a pouch of 50 gold. <laughs> no, only I'm allowed to have 50 gold. Yeah, no, you get you get allowance. <laughs> Finally, Gracie. It's a me. It's a you. I am attempting to also repost my art. Let me just scroll up to where you've posted it before. I am attempting to get it to load. Look at that it's intimidating okay. figure. Yes. Yes. Oh, right, there we go. Yes. Mm. Intimidation. Uh, this guy, except 
without, you know, axes or a mask or a cape or armor is sitting up. <laughs> you. So basically, not the picture. You know. <laughs> Blue hair. hair. Same. The the hair is same. You you Mazoy feel particularly exposed. Uh, you just you don't feel right without everything on. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, You're not naked, but like. I will post a picture of this person's face so that we can better uh, imagine. But <laughs> Mazoy is going to. Uh, very slowly open their eyes, which also are the same as this picture. They are just kind of glowing like that. Um, and they're going to very slowly sit up and kind of move automatically into a crouching position, and then they're just going to quickly go and give, like, an assessment of the room of what they see. Roll perception check. Roll the bone. Nineteen. Nineteen, pretty good. Uh, among with what I've described before, you do notice at one end of this r chamber there are a set of what look to be doors. Almost set in a corner. Uh, possibly leading out of this chamber. Um, the In the center there is some sort of dark stain. You can't quite place, at least not unless you get closer, and uh, the source of light you figure is coming from these almost, it's almost ambient, it's kind of coming from these little crevices near the top. It's just faint light, it's, uh, the entire room is dim light, if you will. Mm. But other than before, there's nothing too extraordinary aside from the figure standing within. Masozi mm. is going to uh, slowly back up until they're like against the wall so that like nothing can come up from behind them and they're going to slowly start making their way towards the doors. You do bump <laughs> into the statue and chest behind you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> We're going to go around that. Alright. Can I have you roll a stealth check, please? Just because. Yes. Just to see. Totally fair. Uh, 17. 17. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to perception against that. <laughs> well, the thing is, this is a pretty barren chamber. So, uh... Do you want me to roll with disadvantage? Yeah, roll of disadvantage. Because there's, there's okay. not really anything to hide behind. Oh, the next one was a nat 20. So okay. 17 is that. I'm going to say that Lace... Lace... Yeah. Uh... Hmm. <laughs> Lace... <laughs> Gora and Mike. Mac. Mike? How did I how Mike. Mike? You three do notice simply because I assume you're not well, okay. Just uh Marcosi and Mike. You two would notice this figure who's trying to hide against the walls. Marcosi specifically, because you are basically doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone else is a bit more. Uh, at the moment, is uh, getting their retrieving their items from their chests, so they don't notice. Okay. So you're in the room. What do you all want to do now? I'm gonna get my stuff since I've seen other people doing that, but I'm not taking my eyes off the sketchy guy. On the wall. There's a sketchy <laughs> guy on the wall? Oh, yeah. It's, um, Mazazi. That's not the name. 
quote. Grace's character. Grace's character. How, how do you pronounce the name? Masozi. 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 Wait, I'm doubting myself. I'll look it up. Don't worry. <laughs> um. Can I light a torch? Yeah, so I'm gonna grab my stuff and make sure I have a weapon. Do yeah, uh, now? yeah, you have you have everything that might be on your character sheet. Uh, Wait, lovely. I'm going to hold my weapon. I am ready. What was that? Matildi. Yep. Andromeda? I have a lamp. Yeah. Cool. Um. But there, as you're making the decisions, there's a sudden bright light fills the chamber as the sound of striking fire. And a torch burning can be heard as Ventor holds the torch up to properly light the room. Yeah, it's startled I, behind, behind the statue. Table. I'm going to hide behind my little table what? thing that I was dead on. I'm just confused, honestly. Just. I'm gonna kneel. Now, as, as you're all looking around at the initial feelings of confusion they do remain but looking at these other people there's this feeling in the back of your mind that you recognize them you, you've seen everyone else here before you cannot place where or or when but there is that background feeling that you have Is it like a bad feeling of, oh, I know these people? Or is it like a positive feeling, oh, I roll, know these people? Roll an insight check. <laughs> I don't trust this at all. Seems kind of sketchy. 14. It's not a bad feeling. It's, it's uh, not quite familial, but... You recognize these people. You feel like you've worked with these people, but you're not entirely certain. It's it's something you can't quite place your finger on yet. Just because you're missing a lot of the pieces. Um, can I look at my statue? Yes. But just more closely? Behind your statue... There appears to be they're all they're all humanoid statues. Yours appears to be a man with uh, dual blades holding them in some sort of flourish. And uh, can I? Oh, sorry. And the long, uh, long sort of coat and uh, leather uh, armor. That's about all you see. Uh, can I roll, like, a perception? Can I do, like, a check of some sort to see if I can make out any other specific details? Investigation, that would be. Investigation. Ooh, that's a good modifier. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Seven? <laughs> yeah. It, it appears that these statues are almost intentionally detailless. They have a lot of, a lot of major sweeping brushstrokes, but the closer you look, the more it just looks like smooth rock oh wait oh so they're painted they're not carved no they're 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 smooth rock in the shape of humanoids uh they're plain gray but they are statues okay can i look at my statue yes your statue you see a large uh female figure feminine figure Wheel of a giant sword planted in the ground in front of her, and two wings uh, behind her on her back, uh, feathered wings. Hmm. Okay. What does my statue look like? Your statue, you see a man of sturdy frame, almost wearing what looks to be a, a naval captain's attire. With a 
a kind of floppy or big, biggest, big ass hat and a naval coat and a sword held stoutly in one hand. So Gora very quietly says, um, is everyone okay? I'm doing, I'm doing just fine. How are you guys? Um, oh, I'm okay. Up. Um, I'm wearing pajamas. I see that. gestures vaguely. <laughs> this is a very interesting group that we have. <laughs> um, <Telling me. laughs> um, not sure why all these random people are in this room. <laughs> if I'm being honest, it's a little confusing. Um, yeah, it's uh, oh. not not too hard to do. I do the same. I am just going to sit here and try not to be noticed. That sounds like a good plan. Um, does Gora like know the names of anyone? Roll, roll an inside check. Cool, I'll roll it straight into my cheese bread. Oh, don't roll into your cheese bread. It makes them more tasty if I hit a nat 20. <laughs> it's true. Oh. Critical tastiness. <laughs> oh, no, not a cheesy 20, guys. Um, so I, where is found insight? So, uh, I got a 16. You feel like, you feel like you do. <laughs> like it's on the tip of your tongue. But not quite. Again, a um, missing piece. Missing pieces. Um, there is one name you do uh, recognize as you look down at your, um, plush toy. My names are Gora and Demiric. Who are all of you? Um, if I may ask, which one is which? I am Gora, uh, and he points to the elf, and this is Demiric, and he points to the doll. Charmed. Okay. What's, what's your name? Uh, from what I can remember, uh, I am Venator. Venator. Okay. If I may ask, does, any, does anyone have any memories from the past 24 hours? That is an excellent question. Do I have any memories? It's interesting. All of you think back, and there's this vague fog. You, you, you vaguely recollect, almost like imagery, or, or, or like vague flashes that you can't quite make out. But in the last twenty four hours, there is, well, what you what you assume would be the last twenty four hours. There's nothing. We got kidnapped. To answer your question, no. Fascinating. I don't seem to remember anything either. Well, no use standing around and learning nothing. Uh, I get off of my, uh, you said it was a column? Uh, it's almost like, uh, like a slab of 
stone that you were laying on got up of got up off of it all right well i st i step off my slab and yeah I, that's what i do okay Masozi, uh what are you doing at this time as people start to get Am acquainted I the doors yet yes uh, you would you would have made it to the doors easily enough can I investigate the doors? Are they anything special? Yeah. Roll an investigation check. Oh, yes. That's a three. They're big, they're stone, and they're not moving. Shoot. Hmm. That, that's lovely. Can I look around the room to see? See if anything jumps out to me as, oh, I can use this to open a door. Our friendship. Everyone else in the room. Nah. Yeah, uh, you, you see, everyone else seems to be no longer wearing the simple clothes that they were once wearing. They're all wearing uh, something more unique. And they're wielding uh, weapons and have supplies on them. You're now feeling a little bit um, underdressed, might be the word. Huh. And you notice that there is still one chest yet unopened. Seeing as I can't get out, uh, Masozi is just going to give a wide berth of everyone while keeping their <laughs> eyes like, mainly on the ground. They every once in a while flick up to make sure that they're not near anybody else. And they're going to go and head over to their chest. Can roll and a perception check. <laughs> Perfect. I just want to see. A fourteen. Yeah, you're you're able to, uh, in this relatively small chamber, keep distance uh, from everyone the best you can, while still staring at the floor. I definitely right. might have a, my weapon pointed at them. Can I go over to, um, how do I say your name? Um, Masoi? Masozi. Masozi? Yeah, Masozi. Okay. I went and did a prompt, uh, thingamabobber in the chat, uh, voice chat, chat. Oh, okay. Pronunciation guide. If that <laughs> helps at all. Um, um, what was I doing? Okay. Cool, I haven't introduced myself yet, so you don't need that's, to. That's why I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna be, okay. I'm gonna try to make some friends, because we're all stuck down here. So, I'm going over. Uh, can I go over to the door that Mazozi was previously at and see if I can do something? Yeah. Uh, I want to see if I can use the my great sword and see if I can use it as like a fulcrum to get it open. Sure. Roll a strength check. Strength check. <clears throat> that is a fifteen. The door feels feels stuck more than just what conventional strength can offer Thanks. throw yourself into the door <laughs> come the battering ram you truly have always wanted to be <laughs> now uh, it's not too hard you don't need to wait too long to describe the next action you do Masozi you do reach uh, this chest. Nice. Does and this person come up to talk to me as I get to the chest? Yeah, basically. About about when you're starting to open it, this tall, uh, gothic angel of a person kind of goes, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Do I feel any evil... Uh, intent coming off of that. 
Roll an in. This is an inside check. Roll an inside check. I thought you were about to say an indecision check. Uh, I heard decision check. No, you don't need to roll for indecision. <laughs> <laughs> I do in real life. Uh, Fifteen. Are you approaching if malice or ill intent, Andromeda? Thinks about it. What'd you say? Uh, are you approaching um, Mesozi with evil intent or, or bad no. intent? No. I want to try to be as friendly as possible. You look though... up. You look yeah. up at this rather tall, you know, foreboding gothic angel figure and you look at their face and it's just such a contrast because their face is like they're genuinely being nice in, in contrast to the rest of how, how they look but it uh, seems, seems they're, they are genuine in their approach they're not trying to be evil or tricky um like, when I look up, as soon as there is any slight eye contact, the Sozi's going to look right back down. Um, and they don't say anything. Hey, I will kneel to your level. Um, is everything alright? You haven't said anything. Uh, so she's gonna, like, take a step backwards and kind of look over at their chest and then, like, look back at the ground that's in front of this person. And it's almost like they're trying to, like, shield their eyes. Hmm. Well, do you have a name? Uh, they're gonna take another step back. Why? They, they seem very unsure. It's not a step back of, ah, oh, I hate you. It's a step back of, <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. It's that, that overwhelmed anxiety step. We all know it. Mm -hmm. We all love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I turn back towards the group and say, wow, we have a, we, we sure are a quiet bunch. <laughs> Um, I know this is a very, um, overwhelming moment, but I promise I am not here to harm you in any way. We are all in this situation together, and I want to help you if you're feeling anxious. Can I roll an insight on that? Uh, on Andromeda? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you yeah, you can roll in, you can roll in okay. Silent Andromeda. Go ahead. I, I would, may I join? That's yeah. A, yeah. That's another net one. Oh man. It's hard to read. You 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 just cannot tell what this person's true intentions are. They Do are I saying words. I, I got Jacob. seventeen. Jacob, stop touching my dice. Yeah, no, no can do. Um, Marcosi, you do feel that this person, uh, this tall. Uh, fig winged figure is being genuine. There. They're, they're, they're trying to help. They're trying to be nice. I know I look a little scary, but I'm trying. I'm okay. still a Tears now. welling up. Okay. <laughs> right. So Gora, Gora notices all of this, right? Yeah, it's... There's not much else to notice, if I'm being honest. Okay, fair. <laughs> uh, so Gora is just like, Hello. Tall lady, take two steps back. Okay. I, um, I am like, I shimmy two steps back. Okay, take another two steps back. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of steps. Okay. And I take another two steps back. Okay. Uh, and Merrick says uh, to the quiet one that you can go get your. Uh, 
Okay. My computer's having an aneurysm. This is fine. I can tell. I thought I heard hospital beeping in the background, and yeah, I can't. Like, that's the uh, stress. That's actually uh, Mazzozzi's stress meter. <laughs> Heart rate monitor. Mazzozzi, <laughs> stop being stressed. You're making my computer have an aneurysm. Stress <laughs> level. Mazzozzi's stop going to put, like, more like hair over their eyes, which are and is going to open up their chest and uh the first thing they're going to grab is their mask Yay. so Yay. as as you take your items your 50 gold don't forget that and, and start okay. getting everything on you all hear uh, kind of quiet grinding as the doors to this chamber start opening mm -hmm. man the first time andromeda tries to be nice everyone's like that sucks <laughs> that is so sus. It's beautiful. Beyond the doorway, there seems to be a dark hallway. And all of you, it's not quite, it's almost like the voice is coming from everywhere, but you can tell it's coming from the next room. Hear this ethereal feminine voice uh, asking uh -oh. you to come into the next room. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I'm going to start, I'm gonna start walking. It's, I'm going to start walking. Uh, it's nice. It's, uh, you know, now that you are ready, please come in to the next room. I do wish to speak to all of you. Can I insight, I insight check this? <laughs> yeah. Guys so yeah, roll, roll an insight check. I mean, I would too, but like... Four. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, the voice... <laughs> They they want to. Is there someone that wants to talk to you? It's hard to read what their true intentions are, but the voice is is sweet and inviting. Uh, at a with a four. Can, can I slowly walk over to Marcosi with my hand my hands up, just away from any weapons I do have equipped? I am definitely pointing a weapon at you. I'll I'll I'll, I'll stop like. Maybe six or seven feet away from you, just just so it's out of range, just in case. Hey, I am I, glaring at you. I am glaring very, very much. Like I would like to scare you. Now, I don't do think I will. do remember, Marcosi? There is looking at all these people. There's a twinge of familiarity. Oh yeah. By the way, just just so everyone knows, my character is five three. I am a very very small elf. I am Same. Five, I am five seven. I think. <laughs> you guys are also short. How tall? How tall is Andromeda again? Like, I don't know. Hold on. Here, how tall is everyone else? Wait, everyone. Venator is six three. Poster heights. Poster heights. <laughs> poster heights. Height posting. Listen, I don't trust the tall one, but <laughs> you seem like someone who knows what. How to handle situations. Do I? I mean, you're pointing a, a sword. I assume it's a sword. It is a dagger. <laughs> it's a dagger. I mean, you're pointing a dagger right at me, so. You seem to have, I believe, your head in the right place. So. Agora is the shortest. Just have to point that out. That I can least, barely hear John. I think that at least temporarily, we should. What do they call it? Uh, alliance. That's that's the word. So if things do turn bad and the tall one does turn on us, we will not hurt each other. Do we have a deal? I still have my hands up, by the way. Okay, I can do that. Cool. I, I lower my dagger away from you. Um. I, I gently put, I slowly put my hands down, but I don't put them near any of my weapons still. Alright. I am still not getting anywhere near the other room, though. Uh, uh -oh. Speaking of that other room, I'm standing right next to, like, right next to where the door opened, correct? Yes. 
Can I? And it's dark. Like, you can't see anything in there. It's it, it's dark. From what you can see, based on the torch you're holding, it looks to be uh, a very tall hallway with a uh, center path and columns on the side that's in ruin and disrepair. Can uh, I throw my torch in there just to, like, so it can illuminate inside of the room rather than just give light from outside? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll strength tag. I want to see how far you throw this torch, this bad boy. Sounds good. Strength. <laughs> Why? Natural one. Let's go. This game now, this is, is a skill awful. check. Uh, this, isn't, this isn't a crit failure. This is a skill check. But you kind of you kind of do like an underhand toss. You get the torch maybe five feet in. Five, ten feet. <laughs> uh, it illuminates a bit more of the hall, but... It, it seems more of the same, and it just goes much further. Uh, given the torch, uh, how often the light... The, let me check this real quick. Like 20-foot radius, 40-foot. Yeah. Uh, Ventor, can you try talking? Venator? Uh, I wasn't saying anything. I can hear you. No, okay. I haven't heard you at all the entire session. Me? Oh, sh yeah. Nike. Oh, it's you it's a good thing I'm recording. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh I no. I, didn't know it. I was like, how? I couldn't hear you. I don't know why. I could hear everyone else just fine. Yeah. I no. Um. Everyone else is in a uh, secret group text except for you. That vendor isn't talking in, so. <laughs> what, That's what I wait, so, so should I give, like, character context again? Like, what I look like? That might actually help! Well, <laughs> Venador is the second tallest. Yeah. Okay. I'm a 6'3 purple tiefling. Andromeda is 6'6, six, six, so. No offense. Say that again? Andromeda is 6'6. Six, six. No offense. You're too tall. Oh, yeah. Fun, fun fact, my character's height is my real life height, so... <laughs> You're literally one foot taller than me in this in, in, in the campaign. <laughs> You're 5'3"? Yes. I'm 5'3"! Yo! Hey! Yeah, I, I chose 5'3 for a specific, a very but, yeah. specific Wait, reason for this character. Wait, you seem taller than 5'3 in real life, though. I am. Wait, who isn't taller? Wait, hold on. Guys, no, my character, my character <laughs> is five three. We do only have so much time. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. The, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Off topic. Uh, it was important. Okay? Yeah. Again, off topic is fine, but today I just don't think we have that much time for it. That's true. So sorry. So yeah, I just I just throw I just threw my torch into the corridor. Yeah. Uh, given how much light a torch emits, uh, twenty foot bright, twenty foot dim there the the end of the hallway you still haven't been able to see in the darkness yet well, oh gosh. Hey, i do have my lantern yeah um i am just going to use my lantern and walk down the hallway as you walk down the hallway uh torches on the two pillars side by side the hallway appears to be um maybe uh 40 or so feet wide mm -hmm. uh, side to side of uh, columns uh, 10 feet in on both sides. And as you step in torches or, or lanterns, some <laughs> sort of light source on each of the columns glows comes to life. Okay, so <laughs> you guys are all just Son chicken. <laughs> okay, then I... Guys, I'm not going to throw an enemy at you just yet. Ugh. And I, I'm just mad I threw a perfectly good torch in there. It's still on the ground, burning. Uh, Andromeda steps to the side of it. <laughs> I'm steps just gonna around it. Uh, I, I'm. I'm gonna follow the tall, winged woman and pick up my torch. What is wrong with this chair? Uh, does does anyone else follow? After I. Uh, oh. on my gear, I would have followed, uh, Andromeda. Alright. 
once also because uh they were the closest to me uh you go when i put it on you heard like a breath of relief and uh masozi like stood up straighter and like actually looked you in the face <laughs> so yeah there you go and then they would follow yeah One, two. Uh, does anyone follow after? No. I will say, as people do start leaving this chamber, the chamber does darken. Okay, spooky. I'm leaving. <laughs> the chamber gets uh, slightly darker. I, uh, I, I, I think we should probably at least be on the rear of them. We have the tactical advantage. Uh, can I draw my great sword just in case? Yeah, you, you hold it in your hand. It's not hard to do. John, you are so quiet. You hey. can turn his volume up if you tap his name. And... No, I can't. It's at full volume. Oh no. Same. What if? <laughs> hold on. I'll just talk louder then. That works. What... Please do. What if we just take the rear? That way, if they do anything shady, we have the tactical advantage. Yes, I, I I like that. Let I can walk in front. I think of well. You All right. With this marching order established, uh, you leave the room and enter the hall. And as all of you enter, there's not quite like the door doesn't close behind you, but you can tell the room darkens. And, and one by one, the pillars each light up there's maybe uh six pairs and you see the hallway in the end is 60 feet long now that this place is lit you see that rubble lines the whole place there is a moth-eaten carpet that lays down the center and there are vines and roots growing in from above and around and the place is still naturally dark it is being lit by some sort of magic and as all, you all approach the end, um, there's this glow, a silvery glow that increases until almost like you blink and you're not sure if she was always there or wasn't. There's this large figure of a woman standing before you, floating in the air, uh, a dark elven woman wearing a silvery dress that she wears on her body with webbing patterns and floating. You can't see her feet and her hair is long and floats behind her as if she is in no gravity. Hmm. And she looks upon all of you. Welcome, my champions. You may have a lot of questions, and I'm willing to answer them. You, but I must tell you that I have chosen you as my champions, and you have a very important task to complete for me. You were all once great heroes in your previous lives, people of great power and ability, and I call on you once again to act in my service. Um, so why don't we remember this? I do admit my powers are not as strong as they once were. Simply bringing you back in the state you are took most of what I had. So everyone else is seeing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Yes. When the when Sozi goes and hears the part of when I brought everybody back, they're going to go and do some very harsh and rudimentary uh, hand signals to what, what's what, it called? What did they, uh, yeah. Thieves can't or uh, hand it's like hand language, I don't know. Uh, hand language of some sort, but it's very like rough. 
um, basically being like, what do you mean bring back? You do ask a good question. You were all dead. Aw, oh, gee, thanks for noticing. You were dead. But now, I have brought you back to life. At least, the states you were in before you died. To serve as my champions. And I do promise you, if you are willing to follow in my path, I will grant you great boons and rewards. Uh, may I inquire Just? what exactly killed us? I would like to ask the same. That I am uncertain of. Your exact means of death are unclear to me. But I do believe in time, just like the rest of your memories, you may find an answer to that, too. I, can I roll an insight on whether or not, uh, on, on, on if they're lying about knowing how we died? Yes, you can roll an insight check. Because <laughs> I don't buy that for a second. Um... Yeah, that seems kind of suspicious. So, 30-20. It's this this goddess. You figure, you can tell with that 20 they are a being of, of power. Some being of great power. Maybe not the greatest, but great power. With that dirty 20, you think they're being genuine. You're pretty sure... I mean, it's in the voice. They feel like they're being genuine about this. I'm they're so powerful, then why wouldn't they know how we died? I am going to um, get closer to this uh. Lodi woman. As I feel more comforted, comforted. Here we go. Yeah, comforted. Yeah. Now, Bye. If that is all the questions you have for me, I do hope you follow this path. Should you help me, I'll be able to help you much more. Perhaps recover what you lost. Right now, my powers are limited. I was betrayed centuries ago, and my powers were placed in seals. If I truly I want to properly bring you back, those need to be broken. What might that be, Marcosi? Okay, I have two uh questions. <laughs> How do you know my name? <laughs> your name is written in your fates. That's weird. And how long have we been dead? That I'm also uncertain about. You have not been dead long enough for my powers to fail completely, but long enough that your memories are in a fractured state. And, and and what the hell is fate? Is is a fate? Fate, and she kind of she brings her arms about, and you see this illusionary image kind of start spreading all around you of these golden threads moving throughout the the room around all of you. But strangely enough, not a single thread touches any of you. Fate are the threads that bind people on this mortal plane and beyond. People, places, things, and events. They all connected through fate. Unfortunately, for you to be able to help me the best I can, I had to bring you, pat, bring you back to life once your fates were completed. I 
I have another question. <laughs> yes? So, you know all of our names then, yes? But we don't know your name? My name is Arashni. Arashni? Arashni. 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 So, Arashne, what is this task? My like, task. Just like specifically. First, that might help. you must retrieve a relic for me, a powerful relic able to undo these seals on my power. A sword once wielded by what they what is known as a betrayer god during the calamity can i say something real quick um whatever your name is um Russian. yeah um um are you really Telling us everything? I'm telling you all that you must know. All that, that we... you should know. And I will tell you everything I must. I hope you do understand that I only have so much power to share so much information. So... You could be lying to us about something. No. Just... I would never lie to any of you about this. Really? And how do we trust then, that? Why do I have a sense that you've been lying to us about something? She gives you a look. That I don't know. For Can in I your, do a check? In, for in your past life, you were most loyal to me. I see. You can do an insight check. Bob, what are you insight checking? Um, the vibe. Good, bad, <laughs> positive energy, <laughs> negative energy, specifically of this woman. Alright. That's a dirty 20. Woohoo! Woo! You... You get the vibe that she is... She's being somewhat genuine. There, There is a level of... Of secrecy to her, but... She, from what she has said, you gather that... You do believe she's being quite genuine. Specifically, like... Is she coming off as a bad person or a good person? She's floating more neutral to you. Ah, okay. How did we die? We already asked that. Can't dis he can't disclose. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's that. But she didn't know. So. Well, that's stupid. Gora says so. Well, more like Gora says, Amira says that it's stupid that you don't know how we died. I do apologize. You do agree. Well, not everyone has to know everything. Maybe she just chose to bring us to life because she felt like it. I chose you not because of your deaths, but because of who you were in life. Who were we in life? You are uniquely powerful individuals. That tells us shit. <laughs> yeah, but, but what were we? That varies greatly between each of you. And that is a part of your history that you will discover. Wait, so because what? you don't have the power to tell us. Convenient. No. Your memories will return in time. I can promise you that. What is our goal right now there's a relic further north 
the sword I told you about before in a place called the Barren Shores. If you can retrieve this relic, retrieve it and bring it to the city of Rexentrum. I see. Okay. I can give you more information. Can it be another city? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Can it be another city? It's me. Although your journey might take longer, it's me. And what if we don't? Then you might not survive. I do apologize, but I still hold your lives in my hands. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that, sign me up. And I do <laughs> hope you understand that I need you. Everyone here isn't going to say it, but I will. But we also need you. So I have a feeling if you are gone, we all would be dead. Still. That is true. We would all still be dead. Well, yeah. I am grateful that you are here, then. You did bring us back to life. Well, it's it only fair to do something for you. And I will do my best to reward you. However you may ask. Be it in my power, I will accomplish it for you. You don't have a map yet. Uh, she mentioned further north. I want to be let out now. That you may, although I do warn you in the next chamber stands the first of many obstacles you may encounter. Like what? A mad beast. Just one stands between this hall and the exits to the mountains. Why? I'm sorry, did you ask why there's a monster in, a, yes. in an abandoned temple? <laughs> yes, uh, I did. Masozi nods. Did to agree with what this person just said. It is the way of these ancient ruins, but it also serves as a test. V Venator kind of I know up at the mention of a beast. What? What beast? I know within what? your heart you have great promise, but it needs to be put into action. I want to be let out now. But what I, beast awaits us? It is a large spider. Oh, dear God, no. <laughs> Gone. I'm out. <laughs> this is the premise of this campaign. I apologize. <laughs> I'm out. All right, well. No time like the present. You may be on so your way. So knows what's in the spell book, right? Yes. It's okay. almost instinctively. Can I add something to my character that I totally forgot to yeah. mention? Okay. So, Andromeda has two spiders with them. Two little spiders. 
named Zippy and Oreo. They are your friends. Oh. Do not kill them. Oh. Or I will kill you, okay? They are my children. <laughs> I don't mean that, by the way. That was not no. in character. But <laughs> Should you pass this test, you will enter into the larger world. And once you have entered into that place, I can only trust you to do what I have charged you with. And she's the, the light starts dimming as she starts kind of fading before she is gone. Is, is she gone now? Yeah, she, she's gone. Oh, okay, so this is a bunch of bull, right? A, it's a, a, a goddess wants us to get a weapon to unlock her full power who brought us back to life yet doesn't have enough power to tell us who we are or what we're doing. Like, the, hey. this this reeks of suspicion. Hey, what? I agree. No, guys, I agree. hold on. What if it just drained her powers so much it had a physical effect on her? Yes, but if she remembers that we're that we did something important at some point, why can't she tell us what it was? Probably just another effect of bringing us back to life. I, I feel like I feel like asking for a weapon belonging to a betrayer god is th that's suspect, isn't it? Well, she brought us back to life. It's a nice thing to do in return. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't I know. I feel like just a sword compared to bringing us back to life is like a huge, like, okay, sure. Right. It's not enough. I, I. If she wanted more from me, she should have done something more than simply bringing me back to life. How do we even know that we were dead in the first place? She could just, like, we could have been kidnapped. This could be a hoax. Um. I've... Um. I. But what, what, uh, proof, roll... what proof does she have that she's a god? This. Well, here's the thing. I think. I think I believe her when she says we were dead. Because my wings, they're no longer functional wings. They're skeletal. And that only happens if something happened kind of thing. Why? I'm, I don't know. I feel like this um, is just like a death. Yes. <laughs> Anything. Can I have you roll a general wisdom check for me oh no not wisdom 11 11 you're not certain from who you can you can't you struggle to pinpoint it but you do get undead vibes from members or member it's hard to say undead vibes from someone at least someone in the party that, just that with just with your your powers. That could be. That might be a problem for, for me. I don't disclose that. Yeah. I uh, I am on the side of the tall one. Not not for the same reasons, but we're kind of stuck here regardless. So let's get moving. I, yeah. No matter uh, what's going on, I would at least like to not be here. Uh, I I agree with that sentiment. Hey, may I also say, um, we are in this vulnerable state mentally. We don't know who, like, we were before we woke up. We don't know, like, what happened. I think it might be best if we just stick together until we figure more out. You know. Uh, I would I would have to agree. Yeah, Gora. Maybe. We we don't want well, more like I don't want any of you guys to get hurt in any way. Um Okay, well then prove oh. it and walks in through the next door. Oh. You know, oh my something God. that wizards are not supposed to do. 
All right. Walk in first. The next room it seems much larger. Uh, it seems like it would have been much larger. You do see uh, the faint bit of natural light at the opposite end, but this room is more filled with rubble and almost like collapsed structure. And also, around the edges, you see a lot of webs. Roll me a perception check. Cool. I hate this for every reason. That one! Oh. Hey. You don't notice <laughs> gonna die. anything. <laughs> uh, I I brandish my great sword and follow Gora into the next room. I uh, go in there. I'll I'll go in behind you guys. Now, you let me this. let me just. I've got my bow. Check something real and quick. I'm gonna crossbow. I guess I'm also follow it. <laughs> let me just check real quick. Um, also, I assume my torch is dead at this point, right? Like it's been used. No, it lasts an hour. Has it not been an hour? Hmm. Not, 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 no. In the game, probably. Well, well, when it comes down to it, it's not like we've done yeah, too much. Sense. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done too much within the time of the game. Yeah, we so. kind of just woke up. Went into a hallway. Exit the hallway. <laughs> yeah, you enter. You enter this room. <laughs> you, I, uh, who, okay, who's entered the room? Let me know. Uh, I have. I, I, I'm in. I'm, I'm in there. All ready to commit. So yeah. everybody is in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. It seems like I'm the last one. All right. Unless y'all do anything otherwise, you see Gora. Gora's reached the center of the room about now. And you do see the natural light at the edge, like a, a small tunnel way to freedom. Is there anything you do as you enter the room? We should probably go that way. I don't uh, like this. That, <laughs> that seems like an obvious tr Oh, wait, wait, uh... Can I use, uh, can I, can I try to, like, sense, like, can I use my Hunter's Bane to kind of, like, sense if there's any, like, creature, foe, in close proximity? Uh, let me check to see what that does real quick. I, I, be one sec, I just gotta find Hunter's Bane on this real fast. Okay, fiends are undead. Okay. I'm pretty sure Hunter's Bane can do that, but I can be wrong. Um, Hunter's Bane is used to track fey, fiend, or undead. Specifically. Dang it, so I don't think that'll work here. Yeah. You can't well, just roll a perception I, check if you so choose. Uh... I don't really know the nature of this monster, so I'll use I'll, I'll use Hunter's Bane. Okay. Use Hunter's Bane. Roll a survival check. No advantage, but a survival check. Uh, eighteen. Looking around at the web, at the rubble, what's disturbed, what's not disturbed. You definitely get the idea that whatever left this behind was recent and is still in here. Mm, I love that. Not not a not a fiend or not fey, a though. fiend, fey, or undead that you are relatively certain of. Okay. Uh, I relay I relay the information to the group. Uh, I, f that I I'm pretty sure this is obvious to ev to everyone here, but I don't think we're alone. Now, Gora, can I have you make a dexterity saving throw? Roll 
rolled off the desk. Rolled off the desk again. Do I need to get you a dice tray? Oh yeah, I have dice trays. <laughs> dice trays are legit. I'm using a bag full of box from something illegal. Okay, let Crack. me just count up the roll that I did get. Uh, dexterity saving throw, you said. Yes. Okay, I got a 12. Your foot catches on something sticky. And as you pull back, pulling your boot off, uh, what, what, what? Sandal, actually. You pull your foot back and your sandal is still there. As you almost get this foreboding sense. And then something pounces onto you. It is going to make a claw attack. Oh, this is awful. Does a 19 hit? Yes. Alright. Is this a dark room? Uh, the room is it's it's dim. It's dimly lit, but given the torch and the lantern, it is well lit. They also have dark vision. Do I have dark vision? I have dark vision! Take 12 points of slashing damage. As this giant spider slams down on top of you. And can I have everyone roll initiative, please? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, uh, I got an 8. Okay. I got an 18. I also got an 18. I got a 19. I have never had this good of luck in rolling. I am very happy. He sapped all the way to bad luck early on. <laughs> Alright, um... Let me just finish up here. So, Mike, you got a 19. Uh, Marcosi uh, and Andromeda, you got 18s, yes? Yeah. What are your dexterity scores? Fourteen. All right, Marcasio is going first. Uh, Mazoy, oh. what did you get? Um, I got an eighteen, but plus what is nineteen? Okay, so uh, you're going to go after. Okay, Mac, Mac, what is your um? I have a plus four dexterity. Plus four. Okay, you're going to go first, and. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Gora, what did you get? Nine. All right. Mike, uh, Mike, Mike, I'm going to start to pronounce the name all campaign. You get to go Mike. first, Mike. Oh, cool. Well, the spider just pounced on top of the elf wearing pajamas. And dug two of its front oh, mandibles oh. into it. Oh, how that's close is how close is the uh, the spider? It's twenty or so feet from you since you were in the back. Okay, okay. I am going to uh, I'm going to use psionic blade to make a ranged attack on the beast. Almost instinctually you pull your hand back and you feel energy welling up in it as if you're grabbing a throwing dagger and you throw it. Make that attack. That is a 24 to hit. That will hit. Uh, you are a rogue, correct? I have a rogue, yeah. So you get to add sneak attack since the spider is engaged with one of your allies. <laughs> By eating me! Where's my sneak attack die? Uh, oh, it's 2d6? Oh... Plus your psionic blades and any abilities those do. So that's 3d6 plus 4. So that is a total of 14 damage. Oh and, my gosh. And then, because I used a psychic blade, I can use my bonus action to do it again. Woo! You almost, as you see it sink in, you have this little surge of movement as you instinctively throw again. Second one is a 22. That also hits. Roll that damage. No sneak attack, though. Just just straight damage. 
As a rogue, you can deal sneak attack damage once a round. Six psychic damage. Six points of psychic damage. All right. Uh, Mazozi. Me. Uh. <laughs> The spider just got hit by two spectral blades that don't actually leave an impact. They just sunk in, and you heard it squeal with pain. Mm, that's question, are we keeping track of arrows in this? Uh, I'd prefer if you did. Okay. Uh, do I, how many you have a full I quiver. I'm trying to see if there, it says somewhere on my sheet how many arrows I have. One quiver is 20 arrows. I have 20 arrows. Okay. I'm going to pull out my longbow and uh, start taking shots at it. Woo. For the eyes, I guess. All right, all right. Make that attack roll. In my brain, how does math work? Oh, that's a six. Unfortunately, your first shot goes a bit wide, kind of going over it, and you just let that frustrated growl come out of your throat. Air. Air. It's a huff of. A huff of frustration as, I believe, as a fighter, level three, you do get two attacks. I believe. Oh, perfect. We'll go with it. I'll take it. Remember your class details, my friends. Uh, I oh, have I so do. many details, I don't I know where to I always do when I'm a rogue. But I'm not right now. Alright. Uh, Marcosi, you are up next, so just keep that in mind. I, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ha, huh, that's a 14. A that's 14. Bad. Better. But it just barely deflects off of the spider's exoskeleton. Darn it. Dang. It seems to be realizing there's a lot more to this. Uh, it all The spider seems to be looking around almost as it didn't expect this many people. Uh, Marcasi, your turn. Andromeda, you're next. Can I shoot it? Uh, with what? Crossbow. Yes. I'm gonna shoot it. You just shoot it. Don't forget, you have spells. Yes, but shooting it is going to be quite effective. Um, That's fair. Is the attack bonus for, for damage or for attacking? Uh, the attack bonus is what you add for attack. It is your proficiency plus your ability score uh, for the weapon yeah, for that's crossbow what I dexterity. I just wanted to make sure. Damage. That's an 18 to hit. That will hit. Damage, you only add your ability score modifier for the weapon. Where did my dice go? There you go. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine. I ate it. I'm sorry. Also, I have all of these rules memorized. Yeah. Okay, I, I feel like I should know this, but do I add anything to the actual attack roll? Like, like no, to the, to the damage roll. You add your ability score modifier to use it the weapon attack. Ah, oh, lovely. That's so for a hand cross, that's going to be 1d8 plus your dexterity. Nine points. Wonderful. Uh, is that going to be everything you do? Um, I, I don't have any bonus action things so um, yes all right uh andromeda it is your turn gora you're on deck i am looking at something real quick hold on holding holding <laughs> does, any, does anyone have that low quality music that they play over phone speakers <laughs> it needs to be intentionally grainy <laughs> Anything over my internet connection will be intended. It needs to. Be it needs so. to be actively losing quality as you listen to it. Okay. Stop <laughs> holding. <laughs> that's it. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to try to cast Witch Bolt. Chaos the Bolt. Spider. Ooh. Hmm? All right. Uh, yeah. Chaos Witch Bolt. Yeah, okay. Make a spell we're... attack. Okay, we're vibing. We're vibing. You're going to add your spell attack modifier, I'll say. I'm rolling for damage, right? No, uh, or you're casting Witch hit. Bolt, so you need to roll to hit. So roll d20 and add your uh, okay. spell attack modifier. 21. 21 will hit. <laughs> now you get to roll damage, which is 1d12 lightning. And yeah. on each of your turns, you can use your action to automatically deal another d12 while you maintain concentration on the spell. Yeah. Alright. Uh, okay. I'm doing this online. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I need to check something real quick. Actually, no, you need to, uh, your damage, you're going to be rolling 2d12 for, uh, this first round of damage. Okay. Because warlocks are funky, and you are technically casting me, this, yeah. you're casting yeah, this at second so level. Beautiful. You're casting this at second level, so you get that second level bonus to damage. Okay, okay. So that's 2d12 lightning, me... initially. Uh, 17. 17. Give me, I need to pull up a calculator. Okay, that. So, Andromeda takes a step back and kind of, how, how do you, how do you cast this? How do you shoot this lightning that takes hold on the spider and creates an arc between the two of you? Oh. Uh, You can choose. Andromeda kind of puts two of her finger, two of her fingers together, and does the point. It's a uh, lightning bending, and the mm. the lightning arcs from the tips of your finger to uh, the joints of some of the spider's legs, and there's this arc that starts pulsing every six seconds or so. Oh, I hate that so oh. much. That's so that's cool. That's actually a lot cooler than what I was thinking. Uh, Gora, it is your turn. Venator, you're up next. The spider rolled yeah. fucking low on his shit. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. It's not even gonna make it. The curse has spread to Jacob. I cast Blade Ward on myself, uh, which means I have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Alright. Okay. Yeah. Do you like weapons? Huh? says in the description that it's all this damage dealt by weapon attack. Uh, yeah, this, this would count as weapons. Okay, cool. Light ward the... I, th um, I think uh, it says that to distinguish between that and area of effect. But I'm just going to say uh, you have resistance to those damages no matter the source. It just kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Yeah. So yeah, Gora's just like, oh, well... Uh, and I'm and instinctively uh, just uh, waves their hand in the air in a very specific way and um, their tattoos t seem to wiggle a little bit and uh, I think that's the end of my turn can I, unless I can use a bonus action to wiggle yeah you can use your bonus you're not, you're not uh, <laughs> restrained or anything so you can take your action to try and get out of there. You can move. Yeah, you can use your movement. My action was casting Blade Ward. You ha you still have 30 feet of movement. Okay, cool. I get out. Yeah, it will make an attack of opportunity against you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So that is a uh, 21. Oh, yep, that hits. As it gnashes out at you with its horrible, horrible fangs. <sighs> I'm rolling so high on damage, thank goodness. On the wizard? Listen, <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose, but... 19 points of damage, half to 10. Yeah, I'm down. No, no, it's it down to 9. Sorry. I'm still down. Like Shit. 0 HP? Yeah. <laughs> Are you made of paper? <laughs> it is a wizard. I'm a wizard. You're a wizard. Uh, I'm a wizard. You're a wizard. I'm a hell wizard. Oh, no. Well, this is going perfectly well. Well, we all knew this was going to happen, so right? Gora was behaving stupidly. Yeah, that is fair. Thankfully, although you try to run out of the way, the spider sees you go down. It's not, it's not too dumb, and right now it has a very painful thorn or lightning bolt stuck in its side. So it no longer sees you as a threat, Gora, so it's going to send turn its attention towards Andromeda. You hear a faint snoring. <laughs> it turns and is going to attempt to claw at you with its uh, uh, barbed oh. legs. <laughs> Which, of course, that misses. with uh, Unless your armor class is, yeah. <laughs> is a, uh, lower than a 12. Oh. It is 12. Oh. That's a shame. Oh. <laughs> That's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, I was like, yes, and no. And it is only <laughs> eight points of oh, never mind, slashing damage. And it was going to bite at you again, but it just rolled a nat one. <laughs> so you kind of, as it bites at you, you got clawed in the side and you're hurt a lot, which I need to make have you roll a concentration check for your spell. Mm -hmm. But you see it rearing back to bite you, and you just jump to the side as it slams its head into the ground and is now dazed. Uh, it can no, it cannot make a reaction this turn. Well. Concentration. Concentration, yeah. Okay. Um, That's going to be a concussion. Yep. Yeah. Wait, what do I roll for that? Uh, D20 plus your constitution modifier. Okay. Okay, let's see. Was this all a reaction from the spider? Is no, this, this is the spider's turn. turn. This is the spider's turn. Uh, okay. Make prepare. You're up next. Uh, I never went. <laughs> oh wait. Shit. Whoops. Uh, you'll you'll go you'll go right after this. <laughs> That's why I was confused because I was like, yeah, I, no, am I not uh, before the spider? Damn. But it's all good. Yeah. Uh, what was your concentration? Save and draw I am trying to pull up my character sheet again. My B guys. Just write it all down on paper like I do, SMH. I know. I didn't have time. I did this right before the session. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Um Okay. So constitute um fourteen. Yeah, you maintain your spell. You still have the lightning sapping into it. Yes. Uh Evanager. Right. Is it <laughs> It is cool. it, it is now within melee of you. Uh, uh great. That's perfect. Quick question. Is yeah. is the room lit significantly, <laughs> or is it like um, super like? You have your torch and Andromeda's lantern combined with the dim light coming from outside. 
the room is lit well enough that you can see the spider. Uh, but besides that, but like, there's no like other lighting. There's no other the lighting. There's a lot of dark corners. I, I think mean, that... there's also me like magic light. Um, Andromeda is I glowing would... a little bit. Uh, yeah, and there's a the lightning. Yeah. I, think... I would assume that would get some light in the room. I but, think that yeah. might be significant. So, uh, so for my so for my bonus action, I'm gonna do my bonus action first. I'm going to take one of the blood vials from that was strapped to my leg, unscrew it, and pour it all over my sword. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna while I'm doing this, I whisper some sort of incantation, and I activate my what's it called? My right of dawn, which gives my which gives my weapon added uh, radiant damage uh, and gives twenty feet of light uh, around the sword. For my action, I'm going to go attack the spider. All right, you see the spider. It's kind of dazed from slamming its head into the ground. And uh, four of the eyes look at the sword as soon as it lights up, and it seems to kind of shriek, shrink away instinctively. Well, also, by doing that, I took three damage. Got it. I just thought I'd mention that. Okay. So make your attack against the speeder. Okay. That was not in my box. Oh, for hell's sake. I got an eight. <sighs> Unfortunately, due to the spider almost r r shrinking away from your blade, it shrinks away from your first strike as you slam it to the ground. Do you have multi-attack? Uh, I don't believe I do, but I'll check real quick. Yeah, check real quick, because a lot of martial classes do have some form of multi-attack. So. <laughs> I, I do not have multi-attack. All right, you slam your sword to the ground and swear as you miss Mike uh, Mac Mike Mac. Yeah. you can just call him Mike Mike god this is really weird right, um, well I'm not a healer so <laughs> time to just start throwing more knives random bull crap go <laughs> you do you do get uh you will still get sneak attack. Chow. That's a, a. Oh, that's. Yeah, that's a 24 to hit. Yeah, that will hit. And then for damage, that's going to be. 5 plus. So that's going to be 14 psychic damage. Okay. 14. And then bonus attack. Chow. 16 to hit. Let me check. That just barely hits. Okay. And then that is going to be a whopping 5 psychic damage. Right, that's not bad. That's actually very good. Uh, Miss Ozzy, it is your turn. Is... So who's down? Um, me. Gora is. Wizard is down. Um, and are they actually close to me or no? Um, you can get within range quick enough. Okay. Um, and remind me, healing hand does indeed uh help with down people still. Okay? Uh, healing hands, a uh, paladin ability. Lay on hands or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 it does, it does, because it heals them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Heals hit points. Uh, I guess I'm going to do some mad dashing skills over to downed person whose name I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. because I'm so there when that happens, and do some healing hands. And this, basically, their hands, their palms and fingertips begin to glow with this really bright uh, white light to go and lay them on you. Um, and it kind of burns! And Gora, you regain uh, three hit points, I believe. Uh, 
yes, yes. Or, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. I'm reading that correctly. Let's go. Yeah. So you gain three hit points and burst to consciousness with the masked Mazoi having their hands pressed against your chest like a defibrillator. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> Uh, I believe that's your action. You don't have a bonus action? Uh, not currently, no. Alright. Been... Uh, Marcosi. Andromeda is I on deck. I'm just going to keep attacking, you know? Yep. No, valid. That didn't land on anything. It's... That doesn't happen often. Um... 19. That will hit. Sweet. I, I certainly hoped so. And, uh, 11. 11 points of damage? Yeah. Damn, that's good. I got the, max roll on the The damage. spider is starting to look very hurt. Yeah. Oh, did we hurt your feelings? You huh? hurt, you hurt his physicality, whatever. Andromeda. <laughs> Uh, do would you like to use your action to deal an automatic twelve point uh one d twelve points of lightning damage? Wait, so is someone like hurt or dead or something? Uh, I'm not dead anymore. Gora is hurt but not dead. Okay, not is dying. it bad enough that I can use like healing hands? Uh, you can use healing hands, but. That would let go of your uh, okay, witch Okay, what? Your HP at three. Oh, I am so going. For wizard. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna stop my magic and go over to help. All right. Uh, use your actions uh, to cast your own healing hands, which is just uh, restore as many hit points as your level, which is just three. Mm -hmm. Three more hit points to Gora. Yeah, I'm not saying hey. so high. Look at all my hit points. Uh, I believe that would be your turn. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Agora. Uh, I've not finished my character sheet, so probably. Yeah, Agora, that brings it to you. I'm looking up a spell. Give me a sec. I imagine you have that, like, frantic energy when you wake up and you're just flipping through your book. You're like, <laughs> wait, I have something for this, guys. <laughs> I know something. Okay, unfortunately, only one of you uh, can get Enhance Ability. Um, Does that affect attacks? Me, not it's not an attack. Uh, I give you advantage on blank stat. Okay. okay, so that can be Strength and Dexterity for combat. Mm -hmm. Um... Wait, I also have another idea. So, with familiars, you can technically um, cast your spell as if you're in your familiar's place, yes. right? Yes. And... Okay. Yeah. Then that actually just helps me out in the long run, I think. Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. Well, also, considering that I, I have lightning work, it's going to be a good thing to tug around... Um, uh, the spider. So yes. then I cast Clock of Familiars. Clock? Uh, yeah, Flock, Flock. of Familiars. And so I summon up to, I summon three Familiars. Um. Alright. Um, and I enchant and I 
chant some words. Um, and the doll begins to glow a little bit. Uh, and uh, the tattoos begin to drip. Uh, and uh, three uh, centipedes emerge uh, from Cora's tattoos and circle around each other and then they turn into vultures. So you have three vultures summoned. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Venator. Okay. Alrighty. I want so, to say this is happening in a periphery. You're mainly focused on the spider. You haven't really yeah, seen like, I, this. I, I, yeah, I'm not noticing. Yeah. This is happening sense. like 10 feet to your left. <laughs> I, I, I'm just I'm kind of pissed off about me missing my attack, so I, I'm just hell bent on at least hitting this thing. Yeah. So a angrily, I'm going to lift up my great sword again and try to slash at the spider. All right, make that uh, attack. That is a fourteen. That misses. Oh my gosh. It doesn't. It doesn't miss so badly. It kind of skirts against the edge of the spider's exoskeleton. It was a shallow angle of attack. And as oh. your blade bounces off, the spider's eyes look at you, <laughs> the wielder well, of the bright light, the one who's closest I, to its face. Can I still use my bonus action? Uh, what do you want to do with your bonus action? I slam my I slam my hand on the ground, right in front of the spider, and activate the blood and, and try to use the blood curse of binding. Blood curse of binding. Remind me what uh, that does. And I need to do. Uh, the spider needs to make a strength saving throw of thirteen. It fails. All right. Uh, let me read what this does. The creature's speed is reduced to zero, and it cannot take reactions until the end of its next turn. Well, it was dazed. But you see your curse, this sort of red energy, come off the back of your hands and into the ground before almost lashing up around the spider and pulling, it, pulling its body down against the ground. Its legs kind of spreading a little bit as it scrambles to try and move, but it's being held in place. Is that your turn? Uh, yes. I. It, it can't, it can't reverse the curse until it, uh, gets that sa it succeeds on that yeah. saving throw. And I will remind you, you are still within five uh, feet of its face. Oh, great. <laughs> and it doesn't have reactions, and you have movement still. Uh, I'm going to move away from it. Easy enough. You you take a few steps back, and you can tell it's trying to lash out at you. But being both dazed and rooted in place, it can't. Now, everyone else is at range. It's going to make that saving throw... Which it succeeds, but I believe that will be its turn as it pushes itself off of the ground and you feel your binding snap. Mike. Hello. Slice and dice time. Slice and dice time. Or metaphorical slice and dice time. Can I shout an insult at it? Absolutely. What are you, a bard of cutting words? Sure. Uh, I'm gonna just hold on. Can I roll to attack first? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to make an insult and then absolutely miss. No, no, no. That's half of the fun. Let's see. Um, that is a 16 to hit. That barely hits. Your mother is a swamp toad covered in oil. And do I get sneak attack as well? Since the nature is still close by. 
it's technically not engaged with anyone right now since it's um, isolated. No sneak attack, yeah. That's 10 psychic damage. And then bonus. Bonus, bonus action. Dagger. Bonus dagger. That's a 22. That will hit. And that's going to be 6 more psychic damage. This spider looks gravely injured. And your father so is so much worse. Gora is now <laughs> sitting up looks and panic, but is alive. And there's vultures circling you three. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. Masozi. Hello? Hi, hello. My internet went out, and I lost half of the work on my artwork that I just finished. Okay. No. So. Okay. Um. How close am I to this giant spider now? Uh, you're within ten feet. Coolio, I'm giving up on my longbow, and I'm pulling out uh one of my hand axes, and gonna go for one of its legs. All right, choppy chop. Choppy chop. Wow, I suck. Okay, but this one has a high. Uh, yeah, still sucks. Fourteen. Fourteen. You yeah. kind of like. You dig in. You do hit the leg, but you only peel off exoskeleton. You don't feel like your attack did any damage to it. Perfect. Uh, do you have a bonus action you want to do? All right then, Markasi. I'm I'm just gonna shoot it again. This seems right. to be going well. Seems to be going well. It is no longer going well. Oh no! Oh, 14. <laughs> you, again. Don't worry, it's just fourteen. The arrow, <laughs> the arrow skids off the exoskeleton. It's you're just not hitting it well. Uh, yeah, well I got two really good hits. You did in, get so two really good I hits. Like, uh, um, I gotta go now, but when yes. the thing is dead, I'm getting my arrows back. Absolutely understandable. See uh, you all next time. Andromeda. Well, bye -bye. we have to die. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, you know, since our friend over here is kind of okay now, I am gonna cast Witch Bolt again. You uh -huh. And I don't know if I can do that again after that. Uh, I'll try again. Yeah. Okay. Make that attack roll. I'm trying. I believe in you. Ooh. Okay. Um. Twenty-two. That will hit. How do you want to do this? Oh, yeah. It was at one HP. Yeah. <laughs> it was at one HP the entire round. How do you want to do this? How do you want your electricity to kill the spider? Okay, because I'm kind of busy, I'll have to let you do it again. <laughs> Alright. I know. I'm sorry. This is so... so you're kind of you're kind of kneeling across from where Mazo is uh, next to Gora with these vir vultures circling you, and you just like with a quick glance over and point your arm straight and you fire the electricity straight into its eyes, and it goes between all of them, and you can like smell fried spider meat as. Let's oh. out one last <laughs> squeal of pain before it just collapses to the ground, twitching. And then once once your mm -hmm. lightning stops, once you let the spell go, it stops twitching. I am so badass. Yeah, Andromeda. Yeah, tall lady. And I think that's a good place <laughs> to end this session. I am so sorry. 
Mm-hmm. Like I'm sorry for accidentally delaying the session for two hours and not responding to any of Not two stories. hours. Well, it was starting it was, at right. seven. It, it was it, only like 15 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, no worries. Man, everyone got their badass combat moments except for me. I missed every <laughs> single Listen, one of my no, I, I wanted you to hit that attack. Excuse me, Gora passed out. Yeah, but at least you, but you also had like your super cool like vulture magic that you use with your cool tattoos. Yeah, you that did. Cool. You did scare the spider of light. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, now that we're no longer gaming, DM, yeah, gaming would, radi would radiant damage have done anything to this? Like, would it actually have helped? I believe it would deal additional damage on top of weapon damage, which always helps. Uh, yeah. I, I'll need to, uh, I think you add like a D6 or something. You would know, you have your sheet in front of you. Yeah. I'm going to stop recording.